Welcome back to the F124 driver career. We are in for another sprint weekend this time around. We're in Austria. We've got mixed conditions in the race, although uh, those mixed conditions are one 67% rain module, the second one from the end. It's, it's that one. That one says 67% rain. That one says 9%. That one says 11%. So it's just going to go bleh, and then it'll be dry again. The sprint and quality are going to be overcast, but don't anticipate any rain. Although 23% is quite a high chance, but the fact that it doesn't change makes me think it's probably just going to be dry for the whole session. We are progressing nicely. Little bit of a hiccup in the last one. Spain didn't go that well for us. In fact, the last three results, we've gotten a 15th, 14th and 16th, which are more realistic for a hash driver career, aren't they, really? So... Relatively happy with how things are progressing at the moment now that we seem to have found a difficulty setting that suits us for now before the AI get patched again at 102. So what well, I had four fastest laps in a row that I've only just realised. So Austria today with a sprint weekend. There might be points available, there might not. We've had a secret meeting with Williams that we've now decided we don't want to follow through with. I may well put some fresh engine parts in for uh, for qualifying here. Although or maybe we use older parts for the sprint and then fresh parts for the full qualifying and race sessions. That's what we'll do. Drop the video a like if you're enjoying, of course. Make sure you subscribe to this Chesnoy Place channel so you don't miss out on any more content. I'd very much appreciate it if you came and join me on stream as well. Link in the description down below to both the Twitch channel and the YouTube streaming channel. For now, though, I'm going to head to track and try my best to uh, get as many resource points as possible. This car still needs improving. 250 resource points only from practice on this occasion. Only one practice practice session and I wasn't able to maximise all of the uh, practice programmes, but 250 will do. Still 72 rated. Now, of course, into sprint qualifying and then the sprint race itself, which will be 24 laps of a thankfully dry Austrian Grand Prix circuit. Sprint qualifying on the way next. There's only four tenths in it, so a good mediums lap. Could be enough to get us into Q2. SQ2, should I say. Really? P3? On mediums? What? Uh, do we need to up the difficulty again? What in the balls is that? 105.4 on mediums. I think we might need to up the difficulty again, gents. That should be us through though. I mean, to be fair, I'm only, I'm only two tenths faster than K-Mag, but he was on softs. Uh, we are through SQ1 into SQ2 with a 105.4 on the mediums. I think, uh, I think we might need to up the difficulty, don't you? Certainly for Austria anyway. with the 105 flat. Which we are currently not looking like we're going to best. 
into 105.4 as our first lap. That felt slow. Currently P9. Three tenths off after two sectors. Trying to get to the line quicker, but we can't. I think, I think we might have done enough to get through nonetheless. P9, we have done enough to get through, and I've only used one set of medium tyres there throughout the entirety of qualifying thus far. We can now use the softs in SQ3, and I have a funny feeling I might be putting it close to pole here. Six tenths faster than KMAG on his worn softs, and we're through to SQ3. Currently on 102 difficulty, I think we'll up it to 105 for the sprint. Oh, here goes nothing in SQ3 then. I think I do have a LinkedIn jack, but I've not logged into it for about six years, I don't think. Purple middle sector. We are set up primarily for that middle sector, really. A slightly higher aero balance on the car compared to some of the other drivers, meaning that they will probably be faster than me down the straights. Slightly wide on exit, but we pop it P6. P6 in SQ3. And we don't know what the AI were using tyre-wise because it's currently bugged with the tyres that the AI use in sprint qualifying. They should only have access to one tyre. They actually have access to all three right from the off and you can quite clearly see that Alexander Albon uh, with a 1.8 seconds off the pace lap time was using a very old set of soft tyres. We will up the difficulty to 105 for the sprint race and that should give us a, a good healthy understanding of where the AI are for Austria for the full Grand Prix, which we'd, we'd rather have a, a difficult sprint race and then readjust for the main race than vice versa. But we have upped the difficulty to 105 Decent from 102 here the for lights, this sprint race. This will give us a good idea of whether okay, so the the 105 is the right now. thing Patience. for the full main up. Grand Prix to come after this. So expecting to fall backwards and quite considerably backwards. But we shall wait and see how it goes. Not a bad start. I mean, Jesus Christ, Fernando Alonso is flying. A bit caught in the apex here, but we're all right. Fernando was just a rocket there. I don't even know where he started, but he's up to fifth now. I think he probably started about tenth or ninth. He's absolutely on it at the beginning here. Show out the inside of Charles Leclerc. Yellow flags behind, not sure what for. Charlie's on my outside here. We are set up for the uh, middle part of the lap, so we're going to be slower in a straight line. But hopefully, we can maximise this part of the track. And that should keep us competitive, or as competitive as possible, in the early stages. Obviously, DRS will become a thing after one lap. And you know what DRS and ERS trains are like on F124 right now, so this is probably going to be very trainy. But all aboard, two fucking two, off we go. P8 currently, the last point scoring position. P9 now, the last non point scoring position. Try and slot in behind Carlos, see if I can, but I think Alex Alvin's going to have a look at me now. He is. Albon through to Kmo, my teammate, is actually getting up alongside here. Science without DRS here now. Big lock up in front from one of the McLarens. Sent him wide. He's in trouble. He's got the inside line for the next corner, though. We hold position against Kevin. 
good run through the last two corners. Sees us right on the back of Albon and Sainz. Sainz is going to go for Albon here. They might put each other out of position on the apex. Albon's going to be slow there. I'm not sure, they, I'm not sure who's got DRS on who. Neither of them using it here. So both potentially vulnerable into turn three. K-Mags going around the outside of everyone. Kevin up to P9. Bit of contact with Alex Albon, but we get away with it. Kevin flying. There was both Science and Albon without DRS there. Hello, Alex. How are you, sir? So they must have crossed the detection point at exactly the same time, which is quite remarkable. We will just have the legs to stay ahead of Albon here. So we'll keep ourselves in P10 for now. Magnussen up the inside of Science into turn three. Contact between the Haas and the Ferrari. Keeps us interested. K-Mag with DRS on Alex Sainz and the inside line. That will be the Haas into a point scoring position. Kevin Magnussen is finally starting to perform a little bit here in the Haas. Maybe. I just want to say thank you to Ronald for the fourth month subscribed. Mercy, Ronald, mercy. Or Danka, should I say, being in Austria. Sainz able to hold on to P8 for the time being, but he's got two Hasses in hot pursuit. Green flag. Gonna flow behind. Contact between a couple, maybe. Nothing to worry about. Lewis Hamilton is through behind, as is Lance Stroll now, and a V-carb on Alex Albon, who is tumbling at the moment. Whether Alex made a mistake somewhere, I don't know, but he's lost three positions. He's falling down the order. We're holding ourselves here with Carlos Sainz. There is a single World Championship point on offer for whoever finishes in eighth place in a sprint race. And judging by the fact that the front train have disappeared down the road, Eighth is the best we'll be able to manage in this Grand Prix. I'm sorry, in this sprint race. But eighth would still be fantastic. Not actually that bothered whether it's me or Kevin that gets it. But as long as Haas get the point, we'll be happy. It is a Ferrari in the way though, so it's not necessarily a given, is it? Science with the DRS this time. Kevin Magnussen will go defensive. This could be similar to the Alex Albon incident, but it's not. Not quite close enough to make the most of a switch back there. K-Mag without DRS now, in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, he's gone for, oh, and he's locked up. He's gotten that horribly wrong, Kevin Magnussen. And he's well out of position. That was awful from him, he's practically drifting around that corner. He lo I was gonna try a switch back, where you, you try and nip underneath, but I didn't have the opportunity to. What exactly ha happened to Kevin here? He locks up, and then almost, well, he does lose the back ends, trying to get the car back under control. Kevin Magnussen is Ken Block by the looks of things, but that's not exactly the best best way to go about going around a corner, Kev. Well, we thought we might be only really able to get a P8 out of this, but mistakes have been made by those in front, and also hard battling. And Leclerc, Perez, and Norris have come back towards us here. Kevin's getting feisty now too. We don't want to fight too hard so that Lewis Hamilton and co catch up. But there's maybe more than one point potentially available in this sprint for us today. Still only on lap 9 of 24, so we're about a third of the way through the third race distance sprint. Anything can yet happen. But hopefully, if it does happen, it's us going forwards, not backwards. Try my best not to get front wing dummies today, shall I? Good, thank you, Liam. How are you, mate? Okay, you're catching the car ahead, but remember, we need to get to the end of the race on these tyres. Oh! Jesus, Fernando Alonso went well off the track there. Had to slam on the brakes to avoid Carlos Sainz. It's cost me a position. What happened to Fernando? I think he's just gone long in turn one. Is that Fernando in first? It is. Fernando Alonso from the lead of the Grand Prix. Actually, it might be second. Yeah, Max has disappeared. Fernando Alonso from P2 locks up and just goes straight on. And then clambers back over the 
kicked the curb and he's now part of our train. I had to get well out of the throttle there. Slam on the brakes and it's actually not me down to P10, although I'll try and get myself back up the inside of K-Mac here if I can. This is quite intense fighting for World Championship points positions here at the minute. Hamilton and Stroll and whichever v it is there are gaining on us. Kevin, please. Trying to get one over on Kevin if I can today. We are just 1% behind him in the recognition charts inside the team. So I'd very much like to get myself that number one driver tag if I can. Quite the entertaining and action-packed sprint race so far. Kevin's going for it up the inside. There's not really much I can do about that. I think I was just ahead over the uh, DRS line as well, frustratingly. So I've not got DRS here now. And Lewis, Stroll and whichever V-carb that is have caught us up. Lewis going for the outside line here with his DRS. And Lewis might take us here. He's going to have the inside line for the next turn as well, annoyingly. We've got worn engine parts now. My NTUH is at 60%, hence the orange logo there on the MFD. So we're hoping that that doesn't give on us. We will be changing components for qualifying and the full Grand Prix. But it's going to cost us some performance whilst those worn parts are still in the car. Hopefully, if Lewis does get past Kevin, he can drag us back up to that group of point scoring positions further down the road. Going slowly, presumed just a failure. Esteban Ocon rather than damage. Esteban Ocon out. K Mag slow there. Oh, and then dived back to the racing line as I was coming up alongside him, which is not particularly agreeable. But we've got the run. And Lewis doesn't have DRS here. I'm a drift left. Almost cut K Mag off. Oh, Jesus, I got a big old crunch from behind. We're stuck on our teammate here. Stop just driving into me. What are you doing? Oh my God, what was that? Jesus Christ. So I got the move on Lewis here. Kevin then darts to the inside as well. He's in the between the three of us and then just gets pinched, caught on my inside. And the three of us effectively are stuck together all the way around turn three. Kevin just won't back out of it. To be fair, he can't back out of it because his right tire is hooked on my left rear. So the three of us are just driving together across the bloody curbs. That's gone well. That might be a better thumbnail than the previous one we had. So that's ourselves and Kevin gone from challenging for P8 and a world championship point to now being P12 and P13. Not a great way to end the sprint. There's still a long way to go. We're only at half race distance or just past. So there's the opportunity for things to still come back towards us. But equally, as things have gotten quite significantly worse than they were, there's a chance for that to happen still too. Kevin and Lance having a look at each other. Not sure where Kevin was going there. Darting one way then the other. He's going to have the run on me here for the inside line, so I'll let him go. Maybe a switch back. Slight contact. Passes were hugging earlier on, and well, we're quite close again here, but Kevin using some battery, making sure that he gets in front. Kevin has made the move, and Lance is now P12. Considering this is for minor positions where there's no points on offer, been some very good battling here in this Grand Prix, or in this sprint race. You think Grand Prix just that habit, I guess. So sprint race chairs, it's not a Grand Prix. The Grand Prix is yet to come. This could be good for us or bad for us. There's maybe a front wing loss in here, or a position to be made. Stroll with DRS, K Mag without DRS. And I say a position to be made. How about maybe two? Just the one then. No, Kevin, I want that line, thank you. Quite happy to sit behind Lance here. Try and take him down into turn three. This is what we should be able to do here with the DRS now. Is he gonna go defensive? He is. Be first across the detection point as well. I'm gonna go all the way around the outside if I can. 
get a much better exit because we've got the right racing line for it and we've managed to take P11 and I put my battery back up in the process as well so I'm going to try and keep hold of P11 here which we have done nearly lost it okay, but 5.3 seconds is not getting overturned Mark but as we're about to start lap 20 we're up to P11 we're nearly down to P12 we're still in P11 <laughs> Jesus Christ this, I mean, this is just a sprint I'm feeling this might be a very long video Chris is going to have his work out editing all this together isn't he Oh, it's going to cost me a position or two. Although Kevin has decided to sit right up my back bottom, basically inside my gearbox then. Came back around the outside. Oh, sorry, I'll be inside. We were nearly three abreast again there. I think Stroll and Ke Kevin might actually have been next to, next to each other and attached to each other once more as they were earlier on. Got the TRS here, which will keep me ahead of Stroll. It's actually trying to throw it up the inside, but I'm not going to have any of that. Thank you very much, mate. Going to race him hard. And I've got the inside line. But he's just got the power. He's got the straight line speed. Well, I'm sure back into P11. We've got one lap to go. To be fair, we're probably in the more favourable position with three DRS zones yet to come. Kevin needs to not go for it here, but he is going for it here. A little bit of inter-team rivalry going on right now as well. Lance is going to be vulnerable. I've got a decent amount of battery left. I'll just use just the DRS here and save my battery to try and defend down the next straight. Lance is going to go defensive. I'm going to go for the outside line. This has worked for us numerous times already today. Don't know who's going to have DRS there. It will be Lance. So let's use some battery. Swipe across the front of him before... He's able to then get alongside. We'll have the inside line for four. And we'll try and drift it wide to then have the advantage into the next one. There we go. Max Verstappen wins the sprint race by a country mile. P2 still not even over the line. Quite the battle between Fernando Alonso, George Russell and the two McLarens. We're going to come home in P11 here after probably the most action-packed sprint race we've had in recent memory on Formula 1 games, let alone just F124. I think there was more happened in that game, or in that race, sorry, than there was in the entirety of the whole Spanish Grand Prix. We've still got another 71 laps and a full qualifying session to go yet. That was a lot of fun. P11. I wonder if I 451. I wonder whether we go out again on that same set. There's only a couple of tenths in it, supposedly, but with track evolution, is track evolution worth two and a half tenths? Maybe, we're nowhere near max. But K-Mag's right with me, so evidently we're on the right difficulty setting because my teammate is right here. He's got me in the first sector, I've got him in the second sector and the third. I might go out on my same set here. Try and save a set of softs for the race. Because we might make it through to Q3, you know. So I'm going to go out on that soft set again. Or do I? Yeah, I'm going to go out on that soft set again. And they're all coming round to finish their laps now. Ocon goes faster than me, we're down to P11. We need to be... P15 or higher. We are improving on our lap, which is good news. As others cross the line, we're still P13 and looking good. And that's P13, P13. P14 now, Kevin on the bubble. P15 now, Kevin improves. I need to concentrate. 
to get my end of the lap right. Otherwise, I'm going out. We're down to P17, final two turns. We're going to improve by just over a tenth and a half, which is good enough to take us from P17 to P14. We are through to Q2 and saving a set of soft tyres in the process. That's good. Huge. Fun fact, a fun racing fact, the faster you drive, the quicker you go. That is fair. I can't say that you're not accurate there, Danny. Put it in a wall here, hence the massive delta. Last two turns. Now or never. Q3 or no Q3? We are... 12th no q3 is the answer but p12 on 105 difficulty i'll take that we are decent in austria not good enough at the minute to score points but decent in austria my teammate was through in that session as well but he qualified p15 three tenths behind me lance stroll out uh, ricardo out but sunoda gets through so both red bulls both ferrari both mercedes one of the Aston Martins, both McLarens and Yuki into Q3. That's us done for qualifying in Austria, though. Time to go and figure out our strategy. After not taking part in Q3, we wanted to see, Jesus, a 1.44. That is quick from Max, although Lando was just over a tenth slower, so he's, he's there close enough. Nearly Russell, three tenths for Hamilton, Piastri and over four tenths for Fernando Perez. Alonso, Leclerc, Leclerc down in P8. Sainz P9. That Sonoda, Ferrari's not great right now. Ricardo, we will start P12. No penalties Stroll, for anyone around us. Any Magnuson, penalties for anyone further Gasly, back? I don't Bottas, imagine so at this stage. Sergeant, we're all kind of changing our parts Sergeant, as well we need. Ocon, Ocon obviously retired the in the sprint the race, so that's why he's taken a penalty there. It. Because something broke. And you can't not replace that. Now... I am expecting this to be a one-stop race, mediums to hard or hards to mediums, and everyone is on the mediums. So I'm not going to play the uh, devil's advocate like we did in Spain and put the wrong set of tyres on. We will medium hard and copy everybody else and hope that this time we can actually have a better race than we did in Spain. If the sprint is anything to go by, we're in for an absolute cracker. 0.4 will do. Superb parking, I'm told. 71 laps to come, and if it's anything like the 24 laps of the sprint, we're in for a belter. Ricardo got away off the line initially really well, but then got loads of wheel spin there. Leclerc's had a terrible start. We know that everyone is on the medium tyres. We know how far the medium tyres go because of the sprint race. So, really. Oh, they want me to go to that 33, though, on the mediums. That is a long way. They weren't having fun by lap 24 in the sprint, so I'm not sure I want to do that. Lance Stroll has just gone for it, lost some of his front wing, cost himself loads of time, me a couple of positions, and he's kind of ruined his own race there. Lance outbraked himself, just threw it up the inside, and ran straight into the back of Yuki Tsunoda. Well done, Lance. That was very clever of you, wasn't it, mate? You'd imagine he'll box, but he might just try and soldier on and hope for a safety car. But it's going to kill his race. Absolutely murder it if he doesn't box. And he's not boxing. The damaged Lance Stroll stays out. And we're going to have to be careful here, otherwise we're going to lose touch with that front group even this early on. DRS active now though, myself and Daniel Ricciardo and crucially my teammate too, 
Gonna need to get past Lance Stroll as soon as physically possible. Might be worth a, a battery burn here, but I think Lance has got DRS on the car in front as well. He does, which is gonna make him less vulnerable and harder to overtake. Hello, Daniel, how are you? I'm gonna do what Stroll did, but not lose part of my front wing. I didn't even feel any contact there, so I'm not sure why it said it popped up with the uh, MFD. Stroll's still with the group in front, I guess. There's a McLaren in front. You presume Lando Norris starting from P2. Max Verstappen has lost the lead of the Grand Prix already. Doesn't mean he won't win it, though. He wins most of them. Lot of spare energy. Okay to use your overtake button. I'll run on Ricardo here. I might go for it into turn one. Up the inside. Full sim wide. There we go. Position made. Up to P12 again. So we're back where we started after two laps and a corner. Now then, let's get past that wounded Aston Martin, shall we? As soon as Lance is out of DRS range of Yuki Tsunoda, he will be super vulnerable. He just keeps getting DRS by the skin of his teeth at the minute, which is keeping him just out of touch. I am saving battery as best I can. I do keep constantly up at turn three, I think as some of the front runners make moves on one another. So it's helping Lance out no end with his front wing damage. You imagine he'll change that front wing at the pit stop. I and mean, if he doesn't, then Aston Martin are absolute idiots. But there is the possibility that they won't do that. Bit of a battle for the lead at the minute between Lando and Max Verstappen, which I think is what, in turn, is concertinering the rest of the field up. Every time they make a move on one another and go slow, everyone else just has to get out of the way. Alex Albon has dropped a little bit back in P14. K-Mag is keeping himself honest right behind me, but not really threatening to uh, to have a go at me. And Lance is now out of DRS range. Here's our moment then. Out of turn one, down to turn three. I've got 99% battery, 100% now. Let's get the move done. See if we can't maybe get to within touching distance of Yuki Tsunoda as well. Okay. Lance moved about there. I wasn't sure which way he was going to go, so I couldn't actually fully commit. It's annoying. Now I'm too far behind him to be able to go for it, and K-Mag's having a look at me. All right, we'll hold Kevin off. Lance, I do want to get past you, mate, before Yuki Tsunoda gets too far down the road, if you don't mind, please. We've got a great run in him out of the final turn. And we'll go for it and try and squeeze him left if we can. We're going to try and hang it on around the outside. That's not going to work for you, Lance. I got a bit rude there. Pushed him off the track, but we're through. Question is, can we now close down that two-second gap to those in front? Okay, here's the gap that we're trying not sure. To Kevin's having a look at trying to take me and Lance seconds. here. And that's not going to happen. We use some battery to try and defend from Kevin whilst we try and close on those in front. Up into P11, which isn't points. But we'll try and get to the points in the next few laps. Quite happy to DRS swap with K-Mag if it means we can close in on those in front. The car ahead starting to create a gap. They're just starting to pull away from us now. We've got a poor exit there. I'll let Kevin get me. Lance has fallen off a little bit. And hopefully Kev and I can just DRS swap, close ourselves back in on those in front. So they've been backed up towards us again here. With a, a change in the lead, looking likely. Alex Elba's actually caught up to the back of Stroll now as well. All right, we've caught then. We have now caught that front group again. Good. 
It's great for race pace. It's great for a potential final position. Just got to make sure that we're able to stick with them for the whole race. And there may well be points on the table for us today. Everyone's all backed up here. I mean, the opportunity to just have a lunge at Kevin out of nowhere. Okay, be careful with the front wing. You've taken some minor damage. Oh, minor damage. I'm sure it'll be fine. Have another lunge at Kevin. Excuse me. Mm, a bit of floor damage from that. Probably a bit too ambitious to get away with it, though. A bit rude on your teammates, to be honest, wasn't it? But at the moment, I don't care. I want to get towards those points, and they are right there in front of us. The underbody's taken a little damage, just watch out for it's it. It's fine. It shouldn't affect us too much. We're back within DRS range of Yuki in front. He's a bit battery to us, so we stay within DRS range of Yuki in front by the end of the straight, which we have done. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the hunt for points in this Australian... Australian? Austrian Grand Prix. Wrong continent, cheers. Oh, mistake. Piastri, our championship rival, is off. Okay, clear. And only just rejoining. What's happened to Oscar Piastri there? Serbia have just equalised in the 95th minute. Oscar Piastri locks up, goes straight on, and then gets stuck in the gravel and has to slowly rejoin the racetrack, shaking off the extra stones that are in his side pods, and now he's back up to speed again. Oscar Piastri has thrown away a potential podium chance there with that mistake, and inadvertently catapulted us into the points. Welcome to P10, everyone. So we're coming up towards where we would have ended the sprint race on lap 24. In the sprint race, we had to do four more laps from here, and the tyres weren't that keen on it. Here, they want me to do another 13 laps. So I'm contemplating boxing around about lap 29 and getting it as good an undercut as I possibly can with fresh tyres. How that will work with this DRS train being a thing, I don't know. It might actually work against me. So we'll, we'll play it by ear as to what the situation is around about lap 29.30. But at the moment, we're just kind of keeping up with those in front. I've not got enough pace to overtake Yuki at the present because he's just got DRS on the Ferrari, which is just dragging all of us along at the minute. But as things stand, with no current safety cars. We'll definitely finish inside the top 15 or 14 or 15. It's just a case of whether we can or cannot get points at the end of the day. I don't think there's the likelihood of a safety car here, really. Unless someone locks up and smashes into someone else. No one's shown any signs of maybe binning it into a wall or any such like. So at the minute on lap 22, of 71. We're all just kind of waiting to see how things pan out after or during the pit stops before we figure out what the maximum result is that we could potentially get from this. So it's all okay, corporate greed. Down. It seems like there's some kind of problem with their car. Okay, the incident's been cleared. Let's get back up to racing. Speed. Unfortunately, Kevin is retiring. My teammate is out. Either he's about to retire. No, the green flag is out again. Is he boxing? I think Kevin might have a puncture here. So he does. Kevin has a rear left puncture. That rear left tire, as you can see, is underinflated, vibrating all over the place. Kevin Magnuson has a rear left puncture here in Austria, and that has well and truly ruined his race. Unless he puts a hard tire on now, and pulls off the craziest Kevin's in the undercut you've ever seen in your life. 
which would give us good information as to whether we should do the same. But by him going super slowly and getting in the way of Piastri and Stroll, that's dropped them now nearly four seconds behind us and given us a bit of a reprieve behind. So now it's the front 10 and then 11th, 12th, 13th as Albon is involved in that now. I'll be very intrigued to see what uh, what uh, Magnussen has gone to. He might have gone to another set of mediums or to a set of softs, which would change the potential strategy. He has gone to hard tyres. K-Mag is on hards, so we'll have to wait and see what his pace is like. And if his pace is good and he closes on those that are in DRS trains, then we will look to pull off an undercut as well and see if we're better off staying in the DRS train or utilising an undercut. There is now a yellow flag as an Alpine has either gone long or is retire retiring. They've gone long at turn three. Or turn four, actually, as it happens. So that's Kevin not last anymore, at least. He can run those hard tyres to the end of the race. They just will be a little bit dead by the time they get there. I need to concentrate now, though, because I've fallen out of DRS range of Yuki Tsunoda there. We are now, thanks to them, concertinering up there. Well, back in it again. Lovely, thank you. As we also say thank you to Ollie for subscribing for the 16th month and fourth in a row. <whistles> Appreciate it, dude. This is going to be Daniel Ricciardo because Yuki's right bloody in front of me. Oh, he was right in front of me. He nearly dropped it and put it in a wall. Yuki Tsunoda, that was not great, pal. All of the tyre smoke reeling off that V-carb. He might just be outside of DRS range as well at the Ferrari in front. I think he will be. Yuki Tsunoda is going to be vulnerable. We might be able to nab ourselves a P9 sooner rather than later. Hopefully. We've got lots of battery. We'll save it. We'll try and take him into turn three. We need a good exit here, though. So I kind of have. I don't have a bad exit. Come on then, Yuki, excuse me, please. I think, I think he might have DRS here, not me. He does. I'm going to come across in front of him just to make his progress a little bit more difficult. That's the power of the DRS, though. I'll try and hang it around the outside here. He's just going to have the straight line speed. I tried to just pull in his slipstream there and got that wrong. Right, okay, the front the front eight are starting to get away now. Ourselves and Yuki might be locked in a battle for the rest of the Grand Prix, depending on undercuts, etc. We might be locked in a battle for, uh, for P9 in this Grand Prix. There's a Ferrari in the pits, actually. Carlos Sainz has pulled the trigger on lap 27. I imagine he's going to go to the hard tyre. Unless he's doing a two-stop, he has gone to the hard tyre. So that chance of an undercut might be disappearing. Now, we wanted to compare our lap times to those of Kevin Magnussen, just to see what we were potentially able to do with an undercut. We were doing low one-minute nines when we weren't tucked up behind someone else. Uh, Carlos Sainz is coming out of the pits now. What is Kevin Magnussen doing on those hards? Mid one minute eight, a low one minute nine and a mid one minute eight. It might be undercut time. I think it is undercut time. Understood. Stopping this We're going to box five laps earlier than originally scheduled. And hopefully get ourselves a position or two after this round of pit stops but I imagine that's going to be a number of the other drivers also pitting about this time. If loads pummel into the into the box in front of us, I'd be tempted to then overcut, but as Ads says in, as Ads says in chat, we need to pull the strategy rabbit out of the hat, start being all magical and see what we can do. We are the only other car to come into the pits. Nobody else is taking the gamble. So has Carlos Sainz hit the nail on the head? 
or are we reacting too soon to that Ferrari boxing? Let's find out. Okay, there seems to have been a problem removing the left rear Good. wheel. Lance Stroll, retiring from the Grand Prix, is pulled off to the left-hand side there. I imagine it's a mechanical failure of some description. It looked like all four tyres were still on the car. That's an extra position for us. He already was missing some of his front wing, obviously, from earlier in the Grand Prix. Now he's missing some engine parts as well, by the looks of things. So, game on. That's another position further back towards the points. No one else looking likely of pitting at the moment, but we are closing the gap on those in front that are on those worn medium tyres quite significantly. Although, they are those worn medium tyres... They are those worn medium tyres that, unfortunately for, uh, for me, they're all in a DRS train, so I don't know whether I'm going to be able to catch them. What is more powerful, the DRS train on really worn medium pack tires or these super fresh hards? We think we might see some rain. ETA, about 15 minutes. Well, there's a curveball. We knew that some rain was coming. We didn't know when. We thought towards the end of the race, like the last... 10 laps or so, it's coming in 15 minutes time, which will be okay, about lap 45. Five seconds. The question is, how long and how intense? Because it was only one block of the weather forecast that said 63% rain and then the rest was dry. It might not rain long enough or hard enough to warrant putting on intermediate tires. Alternatively, it might smash it down. We might end up having to go to Inters regardless. We shall wait and see. But that is the biggest of curveballs and what has already been a very intense Grand Prix weekend. Bottas is in the box right now, as is one of the Ferrari. That will be Charles Leclerc. And now we'll find out whether the undercut worked or not. Because Charles Leclerc was the car in front of Yuki Tsunoda and well quite frankly I think the gap's about the same so we haven't gained anything but we haven't lost anything either so we should still be about P9 after everyone's pit P9 or 10 front runners are all in the box now everybody's in is Charles Leclerc going to make loads of positions here? Yeah, he is. Are we going to make loads of positions here? Yes, we are. We come out P7. The undercut works. Thank you, Carlos Sainz. And Lewis Hamilton does not have DRS here. His tyres will be cold. But he's in a Mercedes, so he's probably just going to disappear anyway. But P10 to P7, thanks to the undercut. Time to get our defensive boots on, because Max Verstappen is going to be very quick. And there's still a couple yet that haven't pit. Perez and Russell now coming into the box. So we might make a couple more positions. We might actually be running P5 by the time we get past the pits. Go away, Max. Go away, Max. It's not going away. There's Piastri, but we were ahead of him anyway. Okay, There's the two in the pit lane coming out. We are indeed P5. Right with Hamilton and Perez now. Game on, gentlemen. There could be strong points on offer for us today. Depending what happens with that bloody rain, that could make everything or break everything. I think the front two are just gone now, though. 
presume it's Carlos Sainz out in front. It is Carlos Sainz with a stroke of genius to get himself into the lead of this Grand Prix. He and Leclerc are gone. Max Verstappen is trying to go. Max Verstappen is through, not through, not through, not yet. Okay, clear. Yellow flag behind. Not sure what for or who for. Absolutely no idea. Still don't know. Got a run here. Oh, I'm going to get boxed in. And Verstappen is going to take advantage. Or will he? He's trying. He won't. Not yet. Okay, this is intense. This is by far the most action-packed race weekend of the season so far. There's been so much racing action and we're only just at half race distance. Keep your eyes out for some clouds forming. Not that we've experienced so far, Danny, no. Oh, Checo locks up. Lewis with a tight line defending from me. Through goes Cheese Noid. Checo bottles the podium. And we sweep through. Lewis had gone really tight into turn one because he was trying to defend from me. And it would have worked if I hadn't had Checo move out of the way because I'd have got boxed in and wouldn't have been able to maximize my exit. But because Checo went straight on, we threw it, threw it through. And we're able to just take the racing line at full racing speed. We are on a podium. How long for? I don't know. But we're currently on for a podium. In the last race, we said strategy gamble for a podium. It really didn't work. Welcome to Austria. It might work here. Lewis tries the same move again. He's got a little bit of an edge on me here. He might pull it off this time. On a bit deeper on the brakes here myself. We'll hold the position. Adam! Thank you for the raid of 92 ads. Welcome to the gang, everyone. You join us halfway through an Austrian Grand Prix. We used pit strategy to get from P10 to P3. By Sergio Perez buckling it. Uh, it's going to rain very soon. Within the next 10 minutes. Chaos to come. The track is clear. Green flag. Yellow flag behind. Thank you for the radars. Max Verstappen is a bit of a different prospect to keep behind in that Red Bull than Lewis Hamilton in that Mercedes. Okay. Lewis made a mistake half a lap ago and has cost himself loads of time. And Max is, uh, well, Max is Max in that Red Bull, so that's any chance of a podium probably gone. But I'll tell you what, if I can stick in Max's DRS, and with the gap back to Checo being four seconds, then maybe, whilst we drag Lando with us, a top five is actually on here. It could be. It really genuinely could be. We up the difficulty to 105. And we are smashing it right now. Turn one is not the place to go for an overtake like that, Lando. There was some front wing damage. Flew off there. An end plate probably off the McLaren. It rains a few lap outs yet, but it is coming, so be careful. This is dangerous. A McLaren with damage. Okay, the car behind is dropping back. We're seeing a gap starting to form. Perez, Alonso and Hamilton involved in that battle behind. Piastri's not far off them either. What? Are we in the battle for a podium or are we just trying to hang on for a P5? Probably the latter. With less than 30 laps to go now. The gaps behind are stable at about six seconds. 
but not growing anymore because Verstappen and Norris kept fighting and it cost us time. Yellow flags behind. I think an RB is either binned it or is going slowly. Let's have a look. About to come down here into turn four. It's Yuki Tsunoda. Has his engine gone? Or does he just drop it? Wait, listening to the engine. Oh, he's just locked up, gone onto the gravel. Same thing that Oscar Piastri did earlier. Unlucky, Yuki, mate. That's your race ruined. Coming up to lap some cars now. Okay, so we're leading our teammate. Pierre Gasly. Going to be in the way sooner rather than later. Then an RB. The two Ferraris are now battling for the lead. Charles Leclerc has caught Carlos Sainz with his fresher tyres. Excuse me, Pierre. Excuse me, Pierre. You moron. He just sat there and didn't okay, bloody move. Lando ahead. Overtake Lando? Yeah, okay. I mean, I'll try, but Christ. We have a tall order. I'll do what I can. The rain is not far away now. I might be wrong, but I think I see raindrops. The rain has fallen on lap 49. And gap to the car in front, 2.0 no, seconds. It can get very wet here very quickly. This is will it and for how long because it is set to dry up again before the end of the race we're catching the car ahead well done but be aware these tyres need to get us to the end of this race I am worried about fuel now as well if I'm completely honest using so much battery that it's just gulping all the fuel because we're running significantly faster Doing a clear patch on yeah way, it's, it's not going to last long it's not going to last long. I don't think it's going to rain hard enough to warrant a change in tyres. Meaning at the moment, I'm probably looking at Sergio Perez catching me and then me trying to save fuel in Checo's DRS. If you offered me a P6 now, if it meant not running out of fuel, then I'd take it. Okay, you're doing well out there. Keep it up. Oof. I know these conditions are tough, but bear with it. I don't think the track's ready for intermediates yet. The timing on that, just my back end decided to step on me as we were going around that left-hander. And he's saying, don't worry, it's fine. Is it though? Also notice, if you look at the minimap on the main straight, the two Ferrari have been fighting so hard for the lead that Verstappen and Norris have caught them. It's now a four-way fight for the win of this Grand Prix. They keep fighting and keep dropping back. Who knows? A wild Sergio Perez appeared. A wild Sergio Perez overtook me. I actually want to try and save some fuel here, but I'm going to have to wait till the next straight. In fact, it's straight after that. Checo's going to get me here with DRS. And then, quite frankly, I just want to save fuel behind him because I'm now over. And I need to save a okay, decent amount of fuel position. Try to keep focus. between now and the end of the race. Still 17 laps to go plus the one we're on. So I can save some fuel, then we can go again. See, when all of the cars elongate out, and there's no DRS train. You get a true depiction of just how quick they are. Sergio Perez, now he's past me, just quite frankly disappearing down the road. We now are getting a, a clear vision of how competitive or more accurately, how uncompetitive this Haas car is compared to those front running cars. This is what should happen everywhere all the time. And what will happen when they fix the uh, ERS, DRS trains and the AI behaviour. But at the minute, we're able to compete at 105. I have a feeling we might not be able to compete at 105 when that AI gets patched, but we will enjoy it whilst we can. P6 at the moment. 
definitely not making any more positions in front unless someone retires. And significantly concerned about those behind me because I've still got 14 laps to go and I'm, I'm going to have to save some more fuel. Carlos Sainz in the box. Sainz is pitting. Why is Carlos Sainz boxing? Has he got damage? Is he just putting on a set of soft tyres? He's putting on a set of soft tyres. I don't know why. You imagine he's got damage. He did box early. Maybe he was on a two-stopper. Not a three-stopper. So Sorry, he was on a two-stopper, not a one-stopper, like we imagined. Was it... Was it with damage? No. It's just strategical. So we followed Carlos Sainz's example without knowing he actually had planned okay, an extra pitch stop. So, um, yikes. I've still got a long way to go on these tyres. And they are very nearly 25% worn all the way around. We're back in the top five again. Yellow flag in front. Yellow Someone going flag. slowly. I think they are. Someone's come off ahead of you. There's a yellow flag ahead. Landon Norris is going slowly. Why is Landon Norris going slowly? Is his engine gone? Yes! Oh my ward! Oh my ward? Oh my word! Lando Norris is going to retire with a handful of laps to go. And we're going to be P4. Lando Norris is out. The second retirement from this Grand Prix. Retiring on the inside of the track there. That is us up to P4. Well, ta very much. Green flag. Stroll retiring didn't really earn us anything because we were ahead of him anyway. Lando retiring certainly does. I'm now in a position where I will need to save fuel again before the end of the race. And those behind are now under five seconds away from me. It's going to be scary at the end. Very, very scary indeed. Four laps to go. Leclerc and Max Verstappen are fighting it out for the win of the Grand Prix right now. Shows you how much faster than us the Red Bull is. Max was with us until the rain. Now he's 22 seconds down the road. I managed to get my fuel back to almost parity. And they're still battling behind, which is earning me enough time, I think. I hope to be able to get my fuel back in the green before the end of the race. Three laps to go at the end of this one, still five seconds to gap behind. We are continually on for a P4 thanks to Lando Norris's retirement. This video is gonna end up being about an hour and a half long, isn't it? Ridiculous. As we come round to start our final lap of the race, Carlos Sainz is closing. He's managed to work his way all the way back from those from that extra stop for the soft tyres works his way all the way up to P5 from P10-ish unfortunately for him I think threw away a potential podium at least if not win here today I'm having to save fuel quite considerably on this final lap but we should be okay now to see that gap to Carlos Sainz plummeting there he is through a remarkable turn of events very much fortuitous very much actually through some decent pace of our own as well the house car is on paper improving genuinely we've even seen Kevin Magnussen challenge for a top 10 position in the sprint that just shows you how much the car has genuinely taken a step forward we have taken that step forward and we're going to earn ourselves a fourth position thanks to Lando Norris' retirement and quite frankly everyone else behind us fighting hard the gap in front to those that won the race and were on the podium shows you exactly the pace difference when the AI aren't all screwing each other over so certainly when the patch comes those sort of results aren't going to be coming very regularly or even perhaps at all a fantastic team. But you're damn right, we'll take a P4 when offered in Austria.
Up next for us is going to be Silverstone. For an event like that, 12 points. 12 it. points for a P4. Certainly didn't expect that when we started the episode today. Experience is up. Racecraft is up. Focus is up. Overall is up. 73 rated now. And finally, we're the number one driver at Haas. A second R&D secret upgrade comes my way. Thank you. Oh, we actually went backwards with the wind tunnel engineer, which has locked a previously unlocked perk. So it's not all going our way. Yikes. But the next Grand Prix at Silverstone will be the halfway stage of this first season, which is... Feels like it's come very, very quickly indeed. Do drop the video a like if you've enjoyed and you are enjoying the uh, save so far. I'd very much appreciate it. We've got 443 resource points we can use, although nowhere really to use them at the moment. Energy, fuel efficiency will be important actually. 97 for that. We'll do that because fuel has been a bit of an issue for us in the past couple of races, hasn't it? Uh, I could actually afford to do the ERS recovery system, so I might as well do it a little bit. I was having to use a lot of battery there to, to stay with and... At times, I could have done with a little bit more, but right now, we've picked up some more points. We're not going to get right, any more. To say that we've had a major I know, shock. We've had week, plenty of major issues on the production line, haven't we? Weekend. So we've okay. closed in on Oscar Piastri. Will need to be ordered from the R &D screen. We're still P6 in the constructors and look likely to stay there. The question is, by the end of the season, will any of those top five teams show any interest in us? Or will we be spending a second season here at Haas in this save. At present, don't know. But certainly we will put the older, more worn parts in for practice at Silverstone. And we will probably be utilizing some fresher parts for qualifying and the race as well. No sprint at Silverstone, it's just a bog standard race weekend. The question is, what is the changeable weather going to be like out on the field? The answer is, oh, potentially mixed. How mixed? Rain at the end, which says that there will be rain well before the end, based by how inaccurate the approximate weather forecast is. So I would anticipate then that that rain will fall with about 10 to 15 laps to go. Oh, that's going to throw the pigeon amongst the... Well, the cat amongst the pigeons. He wants to throw the pigeon amongst the cats. I'm sure the cats don't give a fuck about one pigeon. No one really improving other than Red Bull as we approach Silverstone here. Everyone else kind of plateaued, so Red Bull pull further away, just as Max did in the championship. Very nearly a 100-point lead between him and Charles Leclerc right now. Continually, the fight for second is hot and looking like a fantastic uh, level of entertainment for those that are involved. Not for us, though. We're nowhere near that yet, but we will be eventually at, at some point in this player save. But for now, that's all for us for today in Osterreich. Join me in Silverstone, and I actually will probably see you after a Creator Series episode, and then we'll be to Silverstone. All right.